Welcome to Cork in the North. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, a couple of weeks ago, I was up in uh, Kiwi's Comedy Club up in Portrush and I worked with a guy called Gary Pollock. And Gary, um, very funny man, never met him. I met him briefly before and stuff like that, but I'd always got on really well with him. And I thought, you know, I really want to get this guy onto the podcast because since I've been living in the north of Ireland, I want to learn about unionism. And Gary is from a British background. He lives up in Ballymena, an absolutely incredibly lovely man. And I got him on because I kind of wanted to have a chat about, you know, unionism in the north of Ireland, in Northern Ireland. And it's important to kind of like hear from everybody. Do you know what I mean? Not just, you know, the same people all the time. So Gary's on the podcast. He's absolutely brilliant. So please enjoy Gary Pollock. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Cork in the North. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, we have a podcast virgin with us, yes. uh, Mr. Pollock. Indeed, yes. Uh, Gary Pollock. Thank you for taking my... Thank you so much for coming on. This no is your problem. first, this is his first, first time, time he's ever been on first a podcast. First time, so yeah. Nervous? No jitters, no. No, it's just a chat, man. Just a chat. Mate, honest we've to God. We've met before, we've gigged before. So Trust yes, me, my fucking audience get no professionalism off me. No. <laughs> they look at this, they go, what is the point of this podcast? Sometimes? I might even take it up a level and you never know. Yeah, exactly, who knows? yeah. Who knows, I might bring something to the table, but no, thanks for having me. It's no worries. No, uh, Gary does stand up, but you also work as well. I do, yes. What do you do for time? I'm not as successful as you, unfortunately, uh, yet. Uh, listen, call me successful, mate. Uh, you should see my overdraft. Uh, flip, well, <laughs> we'll not go into that. But no, I actually, uh, my background's a wee bit checkered, Andrew. And you know we've sort of spoke off camera, but I work in digital marketing now for yeah. Crowd in Belfast. That's just how I was able to get here so fast. So exactly. it was great because I'm from all, Ballymena, as you can tell from the yeah. accent. So. All these new jobs, you know, digital yeah. marketing that didn't exist 20 years ago. It's yeah. all like work from home in a fucking tracksuit. That's it. exactly. That kind of stuff. I mean, it's all like, laptop shit. From here it? down, I'm just wearing board shorts. You know, yeah, I mean? like, like you, you don't see it's, it's horrific. Like, it's, I mean, I'm. I, you can tell, like you know, it's, yeah. it's not a sight, but yeah. So um, yeah. So, so we met. Um, very interesting, actually, um, because. When we met, we met in Ballymena. We did, yes. And we did that theatre in the Ballymena, Braid. the Braid Theatre, which was a great gig. Yes, it was. And now, for listeners outside of the north, uh, what kind of struck me is Ballymena would be would be classed as a very sort of unionist British area, which is totally cool. 100%, yeah. And I do a lot of jokes about Ballymena. You do? Everyone, uh, it seems to be a theme on the, yes. on the, on, on the Pure, circuit. Ballymena be, and Lauren, a wee bit of Lurgan. A wee bit of Lurgan. Gets it tight. I think I go for Newton Ards fucking hard, though. Yeah, Norris is seen. Yeah, Norris is a wee bit middle class in my eyes. But I go. That's why I go for it. Aye. See yeah. what I mean? It's like I think the general they need a touch as well. Well, the general people take the piss out of the basics, Lauren, Lurg, and all Aye. that. I go for the opposite. Good. Go for it. Man back. after my own heart. Yeah. Now I would have spent quite a bit of time up in Ballymena because I played golf quite a bit up in Galgorham. Oh yeah. So I would have got up to so. I so, was overdraft. Yeah. Trust me. Uh, uh, <laughs> can I just say uh, when I, I I don't I I've been invited by mates of mine. And so, you know, I'm not playing there all the time. Yeah. Fucking, I don't have the money for that. Oh, dear. So uh, we met, and um, one thing I, that was very interesting talking to you, because you're a stand-up comic as well, is, and one thing I've noticed from when I've lived in the UK, uh, when I you lived over in London and England, now I live here in the North and whatever, UK, Great Britain, whatever, is a lot of people that I've met, comedians from, I suppose, the unionist side of the world, the, yeah. the, the British side we've got William Thompson here and stuff like yeah. that I've had Willie on here loads of times William's yeah. great crack and stuff like that but I got Could into a, very... get a more loyalist name if he tried by the way oh it's William Thompson like, I mean, oh that, Jesus Christ you know what I mean like that's just like the boiler plate for like yeah William like... and Gary <laughs> if, if you're called William Gary Dave <laughs> yeah. Steve well, you're my, probably, middle name, you... my middle name's David oh there so you there, go there right. you go you know? so you would come from a unionist background or a British background is that right yeah I mean I mean, when you have to tick a box yeah you technically do. you know it's one of them where I come from I'm kind of I grew up, I'm that next generation of, I suppose, I didn't, grew up in a Protestant or Loyalist area where, like, we don't really give a fuck, yeah. to be honest. It's sort of like, we can take it or leave it, and we can see it from both sides, but you still have your inbuilt kind of mannerisms that you can't get away from either. Which are? Views, which are just like, you know, when you see red, white, and blue, you hum, you know, the sash, you know, that's just them, we think. You, you see know, red, white, you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just, and then when you get into, like, when we're driving here, you're going past, like, obviously, uh, mural, you know, Republican murals and stuff like that, you're a wee bit like, fuck, lock the doors. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> just in case they know. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just in case there's, like, this sort of, like, Republican sort of tracking system that I don't know about that's, like, going on, like, the Da Vinci Code, and they're, like, basically tracking all the Protestants. Or yeah, yeah. Used to be Protestants or whatever. I used to have yeah. a joke. I used to have a joke that I used to do in stand up, which was uh, I say the biggest the biggest minority population in the Republic of Ireland is British, and people really, really don't know that. 282,000 282, people live in the south of Ireland with British passports. Wow. And my, my bit was like, but and it's all right, they're on tags and we know where they are at all times. And I used to do this, this is years ago, I used to do all this kind of stuff. And 
it, that was just a, like a nice little joke because yeah. people don't realise the way I look at it is that like the Republic of Ireland has a big British population yeah and obviously here in the north but what I what I liked about you was you. I want to learn apart from the basic shit that we hear all the feckin' time on a layman's terms because we have a lot of people that listen outside of the north what is unionism? what is it? That's a very good question and I would love to answer that like in a political way but there's no way of answering that in like terms apart from it. Unionism is essentially identifying as you're, you're British. You identify as Queen and Crown, red, white and blue. Ireland is Northern Ireland and part of the UK. You're not part of the island of Ireland. So that's very much and obviously within that you've got you know the Orange Order which I don't know if you know much about or uh, obviously apart from the marching every year in the 12th. I know a lot but, about them. Um, it's obviously like it's like the parent company of you. Of like the like, parent the, company. Like, if we're gonna go, if we're gonna go, obviously, I, like, they're the glaziers. Uh, yeah, they're, they're the glaziers, glaziers of Manchester yeah, yeah, United. The Grand Orange Lodge is like the parent. They're the glaziers. They're the parent company, and they basically set out all the terms. And then you've all these wee like tiny lodges within that, which are I suppose like the, the players as such. You know who can like you know you can sign up to you could sign up to the lodge. Well, you probably I can't. Actually. I'm not allowed. Have you been in? Have you been no, in? But, uh, but I, I wouldn't be allowed. No, you. I, I, I'm. Forgive me if I'm wrong here, but I'm nearly sure if you've been in a, for mass, you can't be in the Orange Order. Like if you, like so if, if, been, you've, if you've been to mass, like Catholic mass, like Catholic mass, you can't be in the Orange Order. It's like I'm not sure if you spontaneously say combust the minute you. Do you know what? In. I I think it's easier like, to get into ISIS. I think it might be. Yeah. <laughs> there's all here. There's like there's the rules and rules, and there's like the rules that they've like let you know that are public and then there's the rules that they're like the private rules the private rules so like I don't know what the boilerplate is but there's like a whole set of terms and conditions you need to meet to be right. able. so almost like imagine like a Protestant fraternity in America you know we see all like American Pie and all them they're like fraternity okay. films and on, on TV that based on the American perspective I feel like there should probably be one based on how to get into the Orange Order yeah. <laughs> but there probably hasn't because they haven't they've redacted it so heavily because it's like in 2022, it would just seem mental. It just wouldn't be. It would be like, that's not real. But it's been right. going on for like however many, a couple of hundred years it's been going. Like So So when you were growing up as a kid, would you have grown up with the Orange Order in your life? No, I was never like associated with like, I was never like my my parents or my any of my close family were ever like in a lodge as such. But like you obviously are growing up around like known paramilitaries and like in an area where like, you know, the curbs are red, white and blue for, you know, six months of the year or however long it takes for them to wash off. Yeah. And like, you know, I'm at a st- I'm an age where like I can barely vaguely the troubles were over but they weren't they weren't fully over. So like I can remember like I lived in a very um I lived in actually but there's actually you, you said earlier that Balamine is a very unionist and Protestant area. There's actually a, a, a like an A town in Northern Ireland there's there is a, a nationalist area as well. Sort of the top the top of the town, as it's known as, would be like known as the na- the heavily nationalist area, and that is very nationalist. Like that's where literally you're driving through Ballymena, and Ballymena is not a big town. You've maybe got like I want to say seventy eight thousand people, and you'd literally drive past the Fairhill. Do you know? Have you ever heard of the Fairhill Centre? That's the big no. shopping centre in Ballymena High. Probably the, seen it. Yeah, it's one that was big. You were living over in London and stuff, but that was like the big advertising thing. Everybody in Northern Ireland knows Ballymena is the big shopping centre in Ballymena High. That was like the yeah, phrase, yeah, you know. Yeah. So if you pretty much go past, you go north of that towards Port Rush, part of Ballymena, that whole part of Ballymena just changes from Union Jacks to Tricolours overnight. Like it's just like you know straight away you're in a you're in a dissident area. Like it's. It's crazy, like, and, and so I actually moved from that uh, very, very bottom of the town, which was Protestant Unionist, till I was about, lived there, grew up there until I was about seven or eight. And then my stepdad's actually um, from, he's Catholic background, so yes, so he's, he's actually, so I'm from a mixed marriage, technically. Um, but we were never, like, heavily, you know, we weren't religious or anything like that there, but it was obviously the review, your views growing up. So we moved to the, the top of the town area. Uh, well, the nice bit over the road. There's always the, there's always the <laughs> shithole. Then there's the nice bit yeah. over the road. Every there's area like, has that. Yeah, it's like the, if there's a state one and two, it's like in Ballymena, uh, there's there's Ballykid one and two, and then the nice bit over the road where people have a little bit more money, it's known as Ballykid three, and the people there hate that because it's right. like guilty by association. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's like, you know, stabbings over here and like, you know... Skiing holidays over there. Skiing holidays over there and, you know, Range Rover evokes, you know, but they're still living in a three-bed semi. But it's... So, yeah, it's... Living in that sort of heavily unionist, loyalist area... Like, I mean, you've lived in East Belfast now yeah. for, for a wee Two while. years. Right? And you obviously see, come the 12th, the, bon- the bonfires start getting erected a couple of months prior. You've got the arches as well, which are a huge part of it, like the bunting and all that yeah. red, white and blue everywhere. That all goes up. That's just, you just, 
grow up knowing that oh right around the 12th of July there's like a, there's a big party on you don't really know fundamentally what it's for but you recognize the the sound of the drums and the noise and all that there and you you kind of you kind of go with it and you fall in with crowds that are very pro that and then you grow up like and they go that when it ends the degree like you know full rangers kit there's always two football teams of course there's rangers and celtic so you see all the rangers kits everywhere and then it's like well if you're not a rangers fan you're the enemy basically do you know what i mean so it's like it can get quite extreme it can, can get quite extreme and like from like obviously having my stepdad at an early part of my life being from that perspective he's a celtic fan too by the way now, i'm not a rangers fan but growing up i was because that's the nature of the beast that you're in um, you know, you would have got bought Rangers tops for Christmas for your birthday and stuff like that. Again, this is how this is how things get passed on yeah. down through the generation because you've no product saying of it. your environment. You're, aren't product, you? you're a product of your environment. Obviously, you grow up and the internet exists and you become a real person and you realise, well, actually, I don't actually conform to those rules. But certainly, I would have taken some of them principles to the the new area of Balamina, the nationalist area, and you would have done stupid things like I would have ran over the road um, from the nice bit to go into the nationalist area wearing a Rangers top, knowing full well that I could probably get like a good hiding if not stabbed. Like And did you, did you do that to provoke people? I did, I did probably I did it for a laugh. You know, you're like you're nine, ten years age, okay. you're doing it you're mucking about your mates. But yeah, you're do you're not doing it to provoke people, but probably like backhandedly you are. You're like, well, you know, I I, I, but, I identify as a nice or as a unionist or a loyalist. I'm over here. I what are you gonna do about it? Do you know what I mean? But even at nine and ten young kids having that in the back of their head oh, as well isn't it well it's, it's that red white and blue mentality it's, it's your either you identify as one or the other you're yeah. either one side or, and that's just the, the the two sides of the coin we were we were brought up with you know how do you think unionism is viewed in England Scotland and Wales they're shit feared of it they're shit feared of that fear, well no sorry they're shit feared of they couldn't care less about unionism they're shit feared of nationalism so in England like I went to uni in Newcastle and, and uh uh, North East England so lived there for three years lived lovely part of the world great part of the world great crack great yeah. great city for a night out isn't it oh brilliant the Geordies man they're like, oh. they're like I, I've done gigs have you ever done a gig over there I haven't I, I only started stand up like three years ago so I never oh, got right. a chance oh to. man the Geordies I, 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 often I want to find, though like, I often find with, with cities like Newcastle Glasgow you know all those sort of cities have great identity within them. Yeah. Like the Geordies, like like Leeds, not so much. Leeds is a lovely city, but Newcastle, you can read, they have, because they're so far away from everything. You're two hours from anything. You are, yeah. You're kind of like on your own little island. It's at 100%. Yeah. And, and, but they're very similar to us, who I would identify yeah. as. I suppose, to answer your earlier question, I would identify probably more as like Ulster Scots, because people actually think and hold it in English. People think I'm Scottish when I speak to them because the Balmain yeah. accent is a very it's got an Ulster Scots twang a lot of the, the language is, cr is transferable um, but in Newcastle they, they have a very similar sense of humour to us actually yeah. it's funny you say that they're two hours away from everything I used to work for I did the store opening for the Apple store in Newcastle uh, you know Eldon Square the big the big, the, the big, uh, I've big shop it, yeah. center I've seen it yeah I've seen it it's massive right and part of the flagship I was at uni at the time and Apple were recruiting it and I was pure like Apple MacBook geek guy I was like I need to work for them guys. Did an application, ended up getting the job, like 50 people out of 3,000. The closest Apple store to Newcastle was either Leeds or Edinburgh. So the fucking BBC arrived and everything, like the queue was out the door. And it just some perfectly sums up the fact that like, is it just like this little island on its, it's own? It but is there's so many own, characters yeah. and it's so many cool things to do. Like, yeah. And they're they're so down dirt, but they're mad bastards too. Like, yeah. I mean, if you walk down Northumberland Street, Northumberland Street at one o'clock in the morning. Oh, I've, I've seen it. Like, I've seen it. You're going to see some Hallions. Like, I saw a guy once in Newcastle United fan punch a horse. <laughs> you know that guy? <laughs> yeah, just punch the fucking horse. Aye. Oh, I think they were playing Sunderland, the biggest rivals, aren't yeah. they? Like, Sunderland. Oh, the, the rivalry is, like, you talk about rivalry over here, oh. like Rangers Celtic, like, the, the rivalry there is real. And I was there the year that Newcastle, uh, she took them down they get relegated remember oh he was the Keegan. manager he was the manager Keegan remember Keegan was it Keegan Keegan was in charge or somebody was in charge that was well established and then they brought Shearer in as like the safety blanket like surely Shearer can't take us down and they took he them took down them. well it wasn't so, his fault the damage was done the wasn't damage it? was done so they were in the championship and that's when you lived there that second time. and third year and I mean the riots the, there was full on riots in the city centre like so we had to go to New I'm a United fan as well so Same as me. I had to go to uh, Sunderland to watch the, the matches which is good crack too but again Sunderland's just like the it's not as it's like a Newcastle but not as good really yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean it's yeah. sort of like it's sort of like the over the road and the <laughs> strange one isn't it an it analogy is strange. there but. so when you were living over there and being from the north it's very interesting to, I want to see like because I well, like, when I lived in London and obviously this is a comedy podcast we do this but the odd time like I'm, when I'm living here is like, I do want to learn 
about yeah. the place a bit more is that when I lived in London and obviously people say where are you from and I go like I'm from Cork and they're like oh you're from Cork and a lot of times people in England would say to me oh is that in the south yeah sometimes they wouldn't know and I'm like no no I'm from like the south yeah and they're like oh right okay and then they, they but I found like a lot of the time depending on obviously who you were talking to but a lot of people wouldn't really know anything they have no they just know that there's something going on in the they, north but they don't know the reasons why yeah and like it's like me watching secondhand knowledge of Love Island like my wife starts talking about it and yeah. I like assume, assumptively know something's going on someone's but I don't know the f- details someone's fucking someone else yeah. and there's shafting someone else yeah. and we don't know what's going somebody on somebody got fingered in a fire pit I don't know what's going on it's like <laughs> what, what's going on here like yeah, you know yeah. but it's just background noise yeah. That's, we're background noise to, think, to English yeah. people basically yeah. but you know the way like union is like, if you, you, like people say they're scared of nationalism and all that kind of stuff so how do you when you were in Newcastle and when you were told people you were from like Valamina hey like <laughs> what was the reaction you got well, first off, I had to slow myself down because they didn't understand what I was actually saying. They needed subtitles because like, yeah. naturally people from my part, and I'm sure Cork's the same, like you speak quite fast. Irish people speak quite yeah. fast naturally. I think the biggest thing was they don't realise there's a border. They genuinely don't, even though there's been partition for 100 years, they just see you as Irish. They don't, like, see, they've seen me anywhere, and anywhere even I got on holidays, you probably get the same as you're that fun Irish guy. Yeah. They don't see me as, and almost throughout your whole life, you're like, no, I'm Northern Irish. That's like the first sentence. It's like whenever they say... And did they get a bit... Oh, they're sort of Did like, they feel like they've insulted you or something? A wee bit, because then that sort of sets the... Oh, shit, what have I done here? Uh, have I offended them? But then some of them just blase over it. They're like, yeah, what's well, sort the of same thing? Do you know what I mean? But then you can start fucking with them. Yeah. Because then you can let them think <laughs> that you've rattled, they've, you know, you've rattled them or that they've struck a nerve and be like, what do you mean, Irish? You know, you can nearly do... Like, have you ever seen the... Yeah, uh, yeah. Have you ever seen the, the Harry, uh, Harry Enfield sketch, William Osterman? No, I haven't seen that one. Oh, well, go and watch it. It's, or clip it into this. It is a oh, fucking brilliant. Can we clip it in, Sean? It's it's a brilliant, brilliant. So sketch. we're going to clip in William Unsterman from the Harry Enfield sketch. It's, I think it's in the Fast Show, is it, Sean? It's one. It's either one of Harry Enfield's solo gigs, or it's off the Fast Show. But he's basically just acting like Paisley. Uh, and he's going like it's just his name's William Ulster, but He's just a staunch unionist. Oh, right. But it's set at like a, a party, like a dinner party. And they're like having like canopies and having like all this poor stuff. And this affluent uh, English woman comes up to him and starts like trying to introduce it to him. And he's just like, William Osterman. <laughs> <laughs> and he's literally just starts, you do not have the right to do this. It's, uh, oh, it's brilliant. Should uh, you offer him the canopies? I, I just go on, how dare you? I, like, Ulster, I, I say I no. do not conform to this. Madam. So, he, so he's doing all the extreme versions of all, unionism all in, a, in a nor- so it's put the extraordinary into the ordinary Correct. that's what that is so I kind of had fun with that with the because my first year at uni I lived with eight people and seven of them were English so like I was the I was the the, 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 the foreign one but even though you're British but I, all that, but 100% but they just seen me as this fun Irish guy who had a funny accent and looked 40 but would they would <laughs> so they then. would they just, just from your own personal point of view would they to see you as the Irish guy? And are you okay except, or were you saying, actually, guys, I'm actually British, like, I'm not Irish, I'm British. I would never Would you actually, ever correct I would people? Never, I would correct them and say, no, actually, I'm Northern Irish. There's a so you don't say British, you don't say I Irish, would, you say you're Northern Irish. Yeah, and that would be, that would be quite common. Like, I would never, like, some people would say, no, I'm British, you know, and that that's people that what you would call a strong unionist, you know, who would, like, would be maybe in the lodge or they would be big ranger support i'm being completely generic here by the way but like yeah anytime any of my friends or my experience and you would have got it out all the time like see that the accent that we have was just like a magnet people just oh, it's brilliant isn't it off oh, here it was fantastic when i moved to england for the first time i had a really strong cork accent and i used to oh i used to even put it on even more like oh i have you gone to the goes how's it going there now uh, is there oh, any chance i, I can get a uh, point again start off from morning jay how's it going there now like? well, i would flip it i'd do exactly i'd flip it i'd use it both ways it was like a par you could have yeah. both ways so like you could have your cake and eat it i'd be at a bar and you'd be talking to your mate just like we are and uh, you would just hear oh my god are you irish and they don't know the fucking difference between yeah. your accent and mine yeah just like yeah yeah, I'm f- and then you just let it go. Oh my god, my granny's from oh, such, and it's like, oh yeah, okay. Oh yeah, go. yeah. Your granny, yeah. yeah. Everyone knew her. Oh, I absolutely. I <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? So yeah, no, you kind of use it both ways, but no, like you can have fun with it. Like that's when they realise, oh shit, what's wrong here? Northern Irish, right? Okay, troubles. Good Friday. Look, you can see them going through like the rolodex of like ten o'clock newses that they've, yeah. they've because ignored. they don't get taught it in history in school. No, and and the the conservatives have taught us that like we're the bastard child they never want it. Like genuinely, like they could give people from London specifically. I have a friend, one of my best friends, who uh, is from London, who I went to uni with up in Newcastle. He's uh, he's like very staunch uh, Labour, 
and he was in it. He's in like the he done international politics. He's very into his politics and stuff like that there. And he heard overheard a conversation from a political party talking about Northern Ireland as being a problem, and they basically just as much said, "Who gives a fuck?" And that's coming from like the the horse's mouth. Like that's coming from people in British. That's coming from politics, the people yeah, who politics. unionists are loyal to. So it's like, what's like uh, you this know, seems to, to have be, a logical conversation. This about seems it is, to be the position of unionism that has. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like. It's like they have that attachment to this ex or soon to be ex yeah. that doesn't it's, want them. Like it's a marriage that's failing, and you know the divorce is around the it's corner. Like you're like, but you're basically Ryan Giggs. You're Ryan Giggs <laughs> before all the bad shit came before out. Before all the bad shit the came out, the poems have been written. <laughs> and like everybody <laughs> you know? knows. People go, "Well, we did we kind of like it." Now we realise you're just a pain in the fucking hole. Ah, exactly. But this is a, this is the problem for the Nor- Northern Ireland at the moment, isn't it? And 100%. Northern Ireland's past is that because of like, look, I'm I'm very entry level politics man okay Same, by the way I'm you know not, you know that book politics for dummies yeah i'm that guy yeah but from living here i've learned that a all people from and i, I people always say like what, what's it like with two two communities okay, i don't see it as two communities i, I just, just people you right? just see it i just one, see it as yeah. people right now but obviously we don't really fight as much anymore like, i don't fight with anybody yeah like i probably fight more with me fucking self me family than i do <laughs> i do up here like but the thing is is that from the last few years of watching the news quite intensely with Brexit and all that kind of stuff, it seems to be very clear that unionism in the North and politics in England are not working and not sinking. And it does come across that you are a pain in the arse for London. Well, we don't even have a functioning government. Yeah. So, like, decisions aren't getting made. Like, So they're like, well, they can't even sort it out themselves. Why should we? Yeah. So what do you think... like? But then the South don't want us either. Oh, it's a trick. Well, so it's a that's tw- a, again, that's another debate. It's a catch twenty-two. It's a twenty-two. So, what do you think is the way forward? I mean, I don't know what the way forward is. The but way- for, as a as a as a person from Northern Ireland, Northern Irish who grew up, think what I, you're kind of stuck in this middle ground. I think that attitudes are changing, but so I think pro- progressively, like for example, in my and my again, not to delve into politics too much because I'm not yeah that same neither. I mean, this is this is this is politics for this is politics light. Politics light, like with no. <laughs> and we are no experts. No experts with absolutely no qualification qualification basis. So yeah. political party. We're just chatting don't, shit. Don't at us. We've just read this off Facebook and are making our opinion yeah. like the rest of the Poland community. But in my uh, constituency area, which is obviously North Antrim area, it's the first ever time. A, an alliance member was voted in, and B, she was a woman. Like, and I mean, that is like DUP123, like that area is like completely, you can't touch it. So like that is showing that there's a generation of people in their late 20s, early 30s, like me, who are going, do you know what? I don't actually identify with that. Your politics doesn't match my f- outlook in life or my philosophy. And then you have like the, the I suppose, my parents' um, generation who are just, well, if you don't vote for the DUP, it's one more vote for Sinn Féin. That's literally the mentality. You'll vote, they'll vote, they'll not care about DUP's values, uh, their it's just, uh, their proposals, whatever their manifesto is, whatever their views are on, whatever rights you could you could name. They just see it as, well, I'd rather vote for a unionist party than have than not vote at all yeah. and, and vote for one more, and that's one more vote for, for, a, for a nationalist party, you know. The Alliance Party have emerged as that sort of non-aligned middle ground. Because they're, they're massive in the East too, which is yeah. obviously predominantly like a I voted, yeah, I've, When I voted, I voted Alliance 1 and 2. And um, ah, cause you're, Naomi, you're, Long. Naomi Long. Naomi yeah. Long, yeah, she's with me. Uh, so I voted for her. She's with me. She's with she's, me. <laughs> me and Naomi, like, yeah. oh my gosh. Oh, she's we're just constantly in, texting me. We're sitting in the merchant Saturday night. Just, <laughs> sipping cocktails, yeah. talking, to, cashing in on the expenses for absolutely, doing no work. Absolutely. But... When I vote, I vote, I genuinely think like the Alliance Party could potentially be two to three elections away from being the dominant party. And, is, you know, and I think that's the kind of way it's kind of going with this new generation of people who are like, you know, all, you know, incredibly sort of like, we're not interested in that old school 70s, 80s opinions on, you know, our community versus that community. Now it's a bit like, don't really care. That's what will happen if we, if I and our generation educate our kids to be yeah. that next generation and then it sort of dilutes the national. it takes so long to do it, it. dilutes that but then the problem is it's like it's like flipping it's like one of them wave machines it keeps coming back at you do you know what I mean it's like it's like COVID yeah, it keeps, yeah, it just, it keeps there's a new variant of lawyers there's a new variant of, <laughs> of unionism coming around the corner yeah. there's a super unionism strand coming because yeah. that is the thing we're either going to go beyond that and we're going to become an actual 
progressive society where there's no stigma around what uh you know, there's no green and white, white and blue or sorry there's no red white and blue i'm mixing them already here there's yeah, yeah, no yeah. there's no red white and blue and there's no green white and gold it's just you're from this part of the world get on with it oh mate you want to have a bit of crack flip me sure belfast now if you walk around it on a summer's day you would think you're in any major city in europe you know yeah. you've table i remember five years ago there was no tables outside belfast you couldn't sit outside anywhere in belfast and it was just it was all very secular all very inclusive i think it's a society it all starts from Belfast and it all spreads out nearly. So the fact that that's happened in Belfast and it has already started to resonate in, in, in sort of pro-unionist areas like Ballymena and, and like North Antrim and beyond, that's only going to, that can only spiral out because you're always going to have your hotbeds. You're always going to have your yeah. your mid-Ulsters where it's staunchly nationalist or staunchly, you know, um, yeah. unionist and that'll never change. Can I ask you, do you think, this is just off the bat now, that because there's lack of a government in Stormont at the moment, that the DUP don't want to go into power or don't want to go in and set up the government with Sinn Féin and the Alliance is because Sinn Féin have the First Minister post. Do you think that there's a little bit of them hiding behind the protocol because of that? Of course they are. Like they, There's no doubt. Like they've, they've they don't want to be seen to be under Sinn Féin in any way, shape well, or form. Even though the First and Second Minister posts are well, classed as equal. They're classed as equal, but they're not. Yeah. Let's face that's why it's it. called First and Second, exactly. isn't it? Like, that's, that's like, you don't come second. Should be joined First go, Minister, oh, shouldn't I'm it? joint winner. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, do you think the guy that came second, do you see him bolt after he skimped him by like half a second and the 100 metres is like, I came joint second when you see him bolt, mate. What did you run? Ah, 9.99. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They don't, do you think like there's an that. element of we're not going to go in because we don't want to be working under or seeing Michelle O'Neill constantly on the telly pushing her agenda I think there's a little bit of that there I think there's a, a large there's a little bit of that for sure and there's also a large part of the, the likes of Donaldson and the top the ones the top dogs have been absolutely had been cut off at the knees by the, the Tories like, like they were but the Tories but, but Boris Johnson said there will be no border on the IRC he lied to you Boris Johnson has got into power through lying and has probably lost has lost his job through lying oh, I mean a leopard doesn't lying change even after a leopard doesn't change his fuck I mean I'm he's funny, on holidays now and it's leopard. like living with somebody who's constantly punching you and you're kind yeah. of going ah, it'll change it Aye. won't no. like I'm not being funny but like it's clear as fucking day yeah 100% but I think I think the DUP have caused a lot of their own problems yeah well, they haven't been. Yeah. They haven't. They've they've left behind that core. You know, they haven't been progressive enough in their politics, which is unfortunately. The they're going to get left behind, man. They're going to get. They are their being, own people they, are going to leave them behind. Well, they are being left younger behind. people. They are being left behind. So, like, yes, the alliance for the first time in that the the gen, the election that's just passed. It, that was for the first. It was like that ah, was historic. Like they have never taken that share. So there is very much a, a three party conversation now, yeah. whereas before it was always them and us or whatever way you identified with it. So. They need to. They need to. They're going to have to co- compromise somewhere. But the problem is, is they'll end up not compromising anywhere, and all fall in arse. And then and they'll end up. up get, they'll end up getting the stuff that they've lived their whole life against. Absolutely. Think about it. And all the work that that was done for the Good Friday Agreement could potentially be on on their biggest and downfall. It just become because it become the whole the, the the the. I hope it wasn't God forbid, but the whole troubles come back again because there's a whole a whole generation of pro people will will go no, well actually we we don't want that. Yeah. And, I really like Doug Beatty. Yeah. The UUP leader. Have you, do, do you subscribe to his tweets? Do you? No, no. I've Googled him and I've listened to him. And he seems a very sort of middle of the road unionist. That's like very sort of like accommodating to everybody and saying like unionism can't be going this extreme. Yeah. We need to look at where our unionist children are. Sort of like. Modernise with them. Sort of like my wadi for unionism you yeah. know rather than like going full fat, fat coke. it's just like yeah full it's fat diluted coke. just dilute it down diluted. a wee, wee bit but, but there's parts of that that I actually like I listen to and I go oh, this is someone you can talk to though yeah I think that's a big problem where there's this wall of orange up that you exactly. can't get you can't penetrate yeah. it's like the fucking walls in Game of Thrones the, the, the one in the north the, the north yeah. will never fall yeah. that's literally like like what, what unionism is and with, with certainly the, yeah. the major parties but I don't really, I don't really know much more about. I know he had a mayor PR wise with a few of the. I think he had a few too many, and he, he did a few tweets. Oh, he did he? Oh, I don't have Twitter, so I don't. He, he, uh, what if I, few, I, I think he, I think that's he actually got a, Kevin Hart. It. Oh, did he? What was he doing? He got Kevin Hart. Was he abusing they found tweets from like, oh, he was years f- ago? Okay. But it's grand now. He's he's all sorted. He's all he's all sorted. I don't know how, but he's, he's apologised. He's, he's apologised. He's put the hands up, yeah. and he's still in power. So yeah. Gary, can I ask you, obviously I'm from Cork, I'm from the south, because we're on Cork in the north. Yes. What is your view, your relationship, your thoughts on the Republic of Ireland? Because yeah. you're from the, like, talk to me, like, you growing up. Because obviously me growing up down south, and I think a lot of people growing up down south, my only n- 
thing of the North was the radio in the morning, RTE news on the way to school, punishment beating, a car bomb, this, that and the other. And I swear to God, it was like, it was so far away from my my world. But you, as a, you know, a Northern Irish person that grew up in a British area and identifies with its Northern Irish unionism, but very light. What what do you think of the South? How often do you go down? What do you think of us? Do you like us? Are we arseholes? Are we just like Belgium and France? Do you not care about us? Yeah. <laughs> do you not care about us? Like, what what do you feel about it? I, I was going to actually ask you because I've never been to Cork. So, like, from my perspective, Cork You've, might as well be. Ballymena um, on fucking speed. Uh, my, Cork might as well be in Timbuktu for me. Really? It's like a six hour drive. Is it not like a crazy four, drive? Four, 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 forty. If you drive late at night, you can do it in four. Oh, good man. Yeah, if you have I a like tag that. on the pole. I like to know the real. Because okay, I, I'm a speed driver too. Like I'll get. Four forty. If Google Maps is saying. Four forty with a stop. Like a, a, a four. If Google Maps is saying four forty, I'm doing it in three fifty nine. Yeah. Like there's no way that's taking me yeah. four hours. And if you're doing it in three fifty nine, I'm doing it in three fifty eight. <laughs> It's about it's four forty with a with a fifteen yeah. minute stop. Well, I've never been, but I know a few people from Cork, and uh, I've, I just see it as like the South in general is a wee bit like bandit country, and from my perspective, in terms of outside of Dublin, Dublin's very like tech heavy now. Loads of big conglomerates are moving into it, but like I've been to uh, uh, been to Donegal, which is nice. Again, a lot of like, lot of the lot of the people from the, the Northern Ireland go to Donegal. Donegal is just like Port Rush for Catholics. That's really the way I look at it. That's 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 the way I that's the way I see it. But Doran, what I said this Donegal, yeah, Port Rush yeah, for Catholics. You can keep that. Uh, visit Donegal. It's Port yeah, Rush for Catholics. Donegal marketing campaign right there. So yeah, um, that's yeah. I've been there. That's nice. I stayed in like a cottage, which was I suppose an Airbnb before it was cool. Wasn't that great? Um, <laughs> Galway's too, too, lovely. Too, too Catholic-y. Gal- Galway's <laughs> lovely. Um, the Guinness is great down south as well. Yeah. I mean, it's great up here, but it's, it's, it's maybe it's a placebo. Um, but I love uh, I love Galway. It's great. It was in the Latin Quarter quite a lot, and there's loads of lovely and wee cobbled streets and stuff like yeah. that there. But it's weird, like, even up here, there's towns in, like, where I would say, like, not even as far as Mid-Ulster. So, like, if I drive from Ballymena to Macrofilt, there's a few towns on the way where you can straight away know I could be at any town in Ireland. In terms of like the names of the shops, the names of the pubs, just kind they of all stuff. fucking look the same. They've got a super value and a and a tricolor up. You know, Centra. That's, that's Centra or Super Value. It's like one of the two. It's a monopoly. Um, so like I've never been as far down as Cork. Been to Dublin loads. I could take Dublin or leave it. To be honest, what's your view in Dublin? Well, first as of a, all, somebody from this. That's your capital. Do you know like, what? So to be honest with you, I would never live in capital. Dublin. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, did, did I say that? Cork is the capital. Cork. Oh, is that like the thing? Cork is like... Is Cork, Cork, is Cork like the Birmingham of Cork, Ireland? Cork, Cork people say that Cork is the real capital of Ireland. Why? Ah, we're just a bit arrogant, like. Yeah. No, but Cork and Dublin... Is that the Roy Keenan news? Yeah, like Cork and Dublin have that little... Side. I'm from Cork, you're from Dublin, you know what I mean? It's strange. They on? Yeah, we, oh yeah, we get, we get on as much as we get Ireland on. Like. thing too, because Dublin are obviously the dominant force, but Cork have quite a bit of... Like, I'm a complete novice GAA it's, analyst. Yeah, well, so way, like, we're, we're sh- Cork have been shit for quite a while. For many years. Kerry's the good one, isn't it? Kerry football's doing well. Galway football's doing well. Dublin football had five... Who, who beat Dublin recently? Dublin got, got Dublin, beat for the first time. Uh, Mayo beat them... No, a couple of years hurt. ago, Mayo beat them in the semis and then Mayo lost the final. Uh, we don't really have that many good teams up here. Is it, is it Tyrone? Would they be the best Tyrone, one? Tyrone and Armagh, yeah, are very good. Derry, Derry got to the semis this year. Aye. And uh, but yeah, like Derry got to the semis. Fermanagh popped up one year and did well in the Ulster Championship and stuff. That's flash in the pan. Flash. Yeah, I'm more of a hurling guy though. Hurling, yeah. Yeah, like see, my, that's mad bastard stuff. Limerick, like. Limerick are phenomenal. Limerick, Limerick are going through that period of where they'll dominate for a good few years. Dublin uh, are good in the football. Yeah, average in hurling. Cork used to be really good for football and hurling, but we've gone by the wayside now for a while. Galway come really good in the football. Uh, they were in the All Ireland final this year, and then slipped again in the in the kind of hurling a little bit. So, you know, every county I has where they're good or co- bad at one or the other. Yeah, and like every county, every, yeah, like every county, like Kilkenny will just be hurling only. Yeah. Like they have a football team, but they're not. They don't even take part in the All Ireland. There's a different league yeah. for them. So it's very, it's very, it, it, it kind of, it's like any sport. You know, your team has that couple of years. And you go away, and you come back, and you go away, and you come back. But Dublin, for me, I love going to Dublin. Yeah, I'd never lived there. The last time I was there, and I mean this with respect, my country, I found it very dangerous at night. Yeah. 
I wasn't Almost very happy. I wasn't very. I found it very dangerous at night. There was an edge to it that I wasn't happy with. And it's something in the air that. Yeah, and you know what? You know what? The happen. cost of living, the housing crisis. There's a lot of a lot of homelessness down there that really yeah. affected me. You know, you're walking around. Look, look, you're wrong. the same for that. Yeah, like too. every look, every city in the world. There's no country out there that can fucking turn around and say we're amazing at homelessness and stuff like that. What they, amazing? No, at sorry, that's a wrong we're sentence. We're amazing at homelessness. We're amazing. <laughs> Are you hosting the homelessness <laughs> awards next year? Yeah, because you fucking aren't now, like. <laughs> Brussels, the best at having the best homelessness in the world. No, my point is that we're amazing at combating homelessness. That was that was my point. Good man. Well said. But uh, like, I just found it was a little bit of an edge. And you know what? Like, I like Dublin and I love it. And I just, I just kind of feel like as people struggle with money and the people slipping through society. And yeah, I suppose Dublin has it has that sort of big European city feel that does have a lot of problems. But you know, again, I can take Dublin or leave it. I do like it though. I do really like it. But when you go down there as a Northern Irish person, do you feel kind of kind of included down there? Do you feel comfortable there? Or do you look at it just like, this could be fucking Paris for me? Like The minute I have to start using Euros, that's like I could be anywhere in Europe. Do you know what I mean? The minute the Roman hits, the minute I go over the border and the signs change the kilometres and like the Roman kicks in, you are, for, it goes from O2 to air or whatever it is. Yeah. I am like, I could be in the middle of Germany. Do you know what I mean? Like literally. And do you feel any me. sort of warmth towards the place? I do, because as the island of Ireland, I do feel as closer than it, it's not as close as it should be, because there's a lot of similar, uh, beyond the pale as, as such, beyond the green and the, the, the red and white and blue, like, we're, we're pretty much the fucking same, like, except one of us grew up playing one set of sports and one of us yeah. grew up hating the other set of sports, you know yeah. what I mean? Because it's like, and there's a whole thing about what, what the GAA are like as well, but I I always feel like there's a there's a whole, there's a whole nation of, uh, like, Protestant boys grew up that could have been pure class. At All oh. Ireland, like, like, think but just how, Paris won't let him go. Think how good George Best would have been at All Ireland at GAA yeah. if he hadn't have been from flipping Craig Estate. Like, like, he'd been like, he'd been scanning boys all around like Croke Park. Like, there'd yeah. be no two ways about it. But it's funny, actually, a weird crossover that I've just realized is, um, I'm actually, I was in a after I started stand up, uh, one of the weirdest things happened where I did my first gig in Belfast in the pavilion with. Um, a guy, Paddy McGacky, you know Paddy? Oh, Paddy, no, Paddy, Paddy very well. He, he runs the braid there in Ballymena, um, come to the braid. Ballymena High. Ballymena High, he's always on the, the case for that. So he invited, he did my very first, he opened the pav, and he's from, he's from Rishartan, which is a Catholic area, and him and another guy, Jerry Waldron, who is from Kerry, wrote a play called The Orange Ball, which is about two neighbouring villages, one Protestant, one Catholic, who basically end up playing each other in a Gaelic match. And it's mad as fuck, basically. It's hilarious. So he's written, they written it for stage, and we did a few rehearsed readings. So after my first stand-up gig, me and Paddy got chatting, both live in Ballymena, went for a coffee. He was inviting me to come and see it. Next thing, I'm in the thing doing three parts. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it's crazy. So, uh, it's, Which side are we on? It was, well, there's Nate, Glenn Gill's Protestant, Glenn Gall's mm-hmm. Catholic. I think that the right way around. So basically, the premise of it is, is the small Protestant village uh, applied for a cross-community grant to do up the Orange Hall. But to get it, they didn't realise they have to have a Gaelic football team. So they basically round up a whole pile of hoolies from the village and then they take them into, and they have to play this legit team from Glengall, who's the, the Catholic side here, like proper legit. Yeah, yeah. And there's this whole back and forth of just these slapstick characters that we all have in each village and we all probably can relate to growing up and stuff like that there. But it's actually quite a funny, even reading the, the screenplay for the first time, it was like you could you could just see that humour's entrenched in it and that's like, that's the fun part of it. But it's just mad that we're having this conversation. I'm like, I literally was in a play about a Protestant and a Catholic village playing each other at GAA and I've genuinely no idea still about it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like there's no... It sounds like a, it sounds like it would be a brilliant film. Yeah, well, it's, it, they've, we've done it like, I think we did like maybe... A comedy six, or something. We did like six or seven rounds. We did it in the Black Box. I think you're doing a show in the Black Box. I so sold Put on an extra show yeah. February. Tickets on sale, andrewandcomedy.com. Go on. Oh, man. 20 quid for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, just kidding. But no, we did it in the Black Box a few times. We did it all over. We did it in a few like, um, we did it in a couple of GAA halls. We did it in, uh, we did it in a bowling club in Ballymena, which was a hoot. It was like 100 people in there. It was class. So like, it brings actually both sides of the community together, that humour. But no, it could definitely, they're looking to adapt it on stage. I think they're actually writing a sequel at the minute. So oh, that's keep, press. keep your Brilliant, eyes man. for it. So there's loads of stuff like that that are really yeah. like exciting. It's basically comedy now, the way it's coming. No, we're sat, sitting yeah. talking here about politics and about the North north and south divide and all that there and Protestants and Catholics but as two comedians there's lots of like comedy there's lots of cool things happening and I think that's probably a lot of that stuff will be left behind because I think actually comedy's nearly become more progressive too because oh, yeah. 
I was at, you know, I run the gig up in yeah. Kiwis in Portrush. I did it, it did up, a couple of weeks ago, it was brilliant. It was headline, it was brilliant, and it was great. We run it every month in Portrush, and uh, follow us at Kiwis Comedy Club. Yeah, um, great club. It's brilliant, and it's funny. Portrush, it's like Donegal for Protestants. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's <laughs> works, works, it's true though. Yeah, it's true. Um, but we we were doing it, and one of the acts, I can't remember who it was, but they did like, you know, like, they're still Protestant Catholics, it was going mm. about, and I heard one of the audience members say, at the break, is that still where we are, Protestant and Catholic jokes? And that really took that took me aback. I was like, are people bored? I of only shit? did I only did one. I know I didn't want to say like, but <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was I wasn't that gig. But people are like, I that took me aback as a comedian. I was like, are we so entrenched in our ways, even satirically, that that's all we can sh- yeah. laugh about? Because we nearly need to laugh about it, or we'd cry. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm not thankfully exposed to any of the atrocities through the troubles like none of my family members were killed none of my family were involved in paramilitaries or anything like that there so it's like i have no first degree knowledge of it but there are extensive people out there still living with us and still living without family members who were you know obviously killed or, or mm. badly injured during it so it's like i think it's important that we we nearly have as a coping mechanism to laugh about it but it's also important to see that other it's interesting from a comedian's perspective to see that we're kind of done with that now too, yeah. a wee bit, do you know what I mean? But again, everybody is, you know comedy, everything's down to at the individual. Well, I do it, I try to do it because I live in the East and I try to do it like, what's it like being up there? And my, when I do jokes about it, it's always like how much I like it. Yeah. Like I'm not like a West Brit, you know the phrase West Brit? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah I'm yeah. not a West Brit. Like I'm, like I'm, I'm fucking proper Irish, like. Yeah. But I don't. Do what do you is that what you identify as, or do you identify oh, yeah. as cat? You know, you're. I'm not Catholic. No, you're I'm Irish. Like, That's I'm your... not Catholic at all. No. I, I hate that. Yeah. Like I genuinely, like I hate all that. Church, I fucking that hate, hate it. Hate yeah. it. I've no interest in it. And a lot of people in the south, people don't go to mass. Like, there's a generation. There's so a, there's a generation of on the other side. No, there's of... people. There's people. That, like I can guarantee, in ten years' time, churches will be they'll be doing it on Zoom, because yeah. there's no one going. They're empty. They can't fill the There's nobody. Marks. Like it's, to me, it's just like you need to go on to event, right? sick of it. Like, yeah, <laughs> you just there's a gap in the market. There. You just be make cash and an cat like priests on the oh, side. Yeah, you did fucking love you, man. They don't like pen, they're not like pen cross community pen. bringing two communities together. We'll do the orange ball once a month. The yeah. Orange ball once a month. Cat lives next week. Then you know. Brilliant. Yeah. So can I, So just just because this is because it's it's really good for me to meet somebody like who. Is just a realized mod- I'm wearing an orange shirt as well, by the way. Like, There's no coins. I didn't bring it up. It wasn't planned. I'm wearing a Spanish really... top, yeah. which is European, so I thought that would piss you off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, dear. Right, so, like, the thing for me, the thing for me that I find, that I'm interested in, is because it's all well and good, like, having the comedians on, we have to crack and all that kind of stuff. But I actually do want to learn about unionism in a way that I go, like, I get the basics, but I've no angst against anybody. I don't really give a f- I don't, like, not that I don't care about I don't, I like, I take, I, I tell jokes about St. Patrick's Day, I'll tell jokes about the 12th of July, but from a different angle, like, I don't really do them, I, I can't do any jokes in about Northern Ireland and England, you know that, because they don't get it. No, they don't understand. They don't it. understand they, it. They don't have a baseline yeah. understanding of it. But when I do it, it down south, that's they obviously worry, get it. That's what I worry about gigging in, in England whenever I eventually do it, it's like, or if I go over to do the Fringe, it's like, well, they get, I, I, I've tried to come away from it, but you can't help but give Northern Irish quips. To Northern Irish people because yeah, yeah. we're very, you know, secular like that. But like, it's that definitely wouldn't transpire. You couldn't do Balamina jokes in London. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you I have to relate you. it to a similar small town. Yeah. But. I just want to go back then to you about the South a little bit. Would you? Would your when you go down, you, you could be in any other country or wherever you be yeah. when you, the minute you cross over the border and stuff like that. But do you feel when you go down there? Do you feel comfortable there? Do you feel like when you've met people in bars, you've told them you're from Northern Ireland? What's it been like? Generally speaking, yeah, I feel pretty welcome. There is always still that almost like... Do they ask you? Inbuilt. No, they, they, know, ask? they know by the accent. They see the number plate first. Like I know for a fact that if I... If the foot's in the other... Uh, shoes in the other foot. If I see a southern number plate up here, you know, yeah, but, there's but, almost like... Uh, but do you, yeah, but they, they see the number plate, but they know you're from Northern Ireland, but they don't know, are you nationalist or unionist? Yeah. I, I would love Have to you know. told people down there that you're not nationalist? But it wouldn't come up. You won't, or we just keep I your mouth shut. I don't think I've ever had the... Exactly, yeah, it's ever, good. So that's good in a, Yeah, in that's a way good in a way. Like. Not, like, I've had it where I've been... Like, I've been walking through my... Like, I've never had it in the South, but in my own town, um, after a night out one, I was only, like, 17, 18, and a guy came up to me at, like, 1 o'clock in the morning, and it was after a uh, it was after a night out. You know, in the, I don't know if they did this in the South, but you used to get buses to, like, nightclubs, and then they come back after maybe a yeah, coffee thing. Yeah, you yeah. would get, like, a 24-seater with your out, mates. Out to the rugby club out, disco hall. Yeah, so on the way back, we drop everybody off at the same place, and a guy just came up to me and was like, are you a Protestant or a Catholic? And, like, had something, like, in his pocket, and I'm like, what the fuck do I do? Like, I'm a 50-50 chance here. Fit. So I just said, you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what, what's going to ha- what's going to happen? And he's like, 
he sort of was I, I threw him badly because you could see he had pre-armed it was like left hand stab right hand punch I am whatever you want me to be exactly. baby like I'll be my self mirror assist is on here I'm like measuring the fucking width of his eyes and all like I'm like yeah. what side are you on do you know what I mean it's but terrible that was it? mad like but no got away with that one thankfully but there are mad bastards out there who oh, would just yes. but haven't encountered any of them in the south thankfully like any time I've been there I've been welcomed as a almost like a tourist do you know what I mean like you know in terms yeah, of yeah and like, like from like from being there being, I was in Cork a couple of weeks ago one of my mates was like what's it like up there they're all mad bastards up there and I said they're not yeah they're We're not, not as mad as they're, they They're think. not, like, like, I just, honest to God, I should be working for the Northern Irish Tourism Board because I say to people, like, look, I know you think, I know what you think, but it's not what you think. Yeah. Well, how long have you been in East Belfast? Two years. Two and years. I genuinely feel safer there than I've ever done living in London. Now, don't get me wrong, I do want to live in Cork again. This is a part of my life that I'm in a period of life at the moment. I enjoy it. I like my neighbours. I like where I live. I'm very comfortable in my Irishness. The flags don't bother me. The orange order doesn't bother me. Uh, you're not triggered. I'm by not anything. interested by it. I've lived in London for years. I like people from all around the world. I'm Irish to the like, core. I'm very proud to be Irish. I have my traditions. I have what I do. And I allow people around me to be whatever. The f- if you want to identify as a fucking cappuccino, do whatever the hell you want. But that's I the, don't care. But that viewpoint is the exact point. You have just explained there that you have a very varied life. You've, you've travelled. Yeah. You've travelled. You've, you've, you've said to yourself... I'm sure you've mates you can think of back home in Cork that have never left Cork. I have a few mates back home in Cork that um, and their I'll be, on, totally I'll be honest with you, like I've called one or two of them out on some of their comments about certain things. So how progressive are their opinions? And, exactly, and yeah. But and then again, it comes down to opportunity, education and young people when you're growing up, growing, growing up where you can get educated and see opportunity to go and explore the world. Now, I think social media has a very positive impact in that in terms of seeing different cultures online. It's made the world a smaller place. Smaller place, but also it has a negative impact, which in, in, it, it can increase hatred for other yeah, people as well. Absolutely. But it's about finding that balance. And I just think that, like, from living up here, this place has so much potential. From me being up here, I realise he has a unique... Northern Ireland. Is Northern there. Ireland has so much potential. Now, whether, whatever happens to Northern Ireland, forget the UK, forget the South fucking go again start afresh call it the republic of fucking lunatics <laughs> and just do tax free Las Vegas right that's it Pong do Kong. something that's do, do, do always, Singapore do something chance, like that Do so, you got a chance but unfortunately there is an element we've got a chance <laughs> got a, there's an element on all sides of extreme views and they're the ones who shout the loudest get the most view get the most coverage but I think just from like a southern Irish guy proper Irish love being Irish love everything about it love other cultures you know, I've lived abroad, lived in, you know, lived in England. I've got, I've had girlfriends from fucking India and uh, Middle East and all that kind of stuff. I love, I love learning about it. Like some, one day, like, yeah, you're, I, you're happy I, I don't care because I'm comfortable in who I am. Yeah. But I think what ha- needs to happen is that, but it's not a lived experience for me here. No. I did not grow up with this. No. So if I grew up with this and I was my age living here now, I might have a different opinion. Like you're only two years into the, the, the I'm only East two. Belfast experience. In about five years' time, Gary, we'd be on a thing and I'd be here, be fucking tricolours everywhere. Oh, I, I, I'll just be here. Genuinely, yeah. there's places, right? You're like, I'm, I'm taking all this in and you have a very uh, honeymoon period view of, of East Belfast. And yeah. Northern Ireland is what I would call it because genuinely there's areas of East I I work part, part of my job, I would cover East Belfast. I genuinely there's bars of East in East Belfast that as a person who had done who could easily say I'm Protestant no baller like you know if I need it but if I've, I need it that get out of jail free card I'm from Balmain I'm a Protestant but you know what do you know what Gary there's bars in West Belfast I wouldn't go in no but there, there's bars I c- couldn't physically go into yeah because I get a hiding because I'm not affiliated with yeah. that group and that's 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 the shit and that, you would that's be the shit to- that that's the shit that's coming onto the news that people are hearing when it's well, not you'd be totally fucked oh I wouldn't if you walked in with that accent do I don't socialise anyway no. You know, just, you just but you know what? Like, I've really, I've, I've like, it's, it's, I, there's one thing I wanted to do with the podcast, and I probably don't do it even more for people who don't live and li- who, do, who, you know, who I don't. you quite a large, a varied audience, like the location. I'm a varied audience, got... yeah, but I'm also very like interested in like this part of the world since I've decided to stay here. And Are you staying? I'm staying. Yeah, I'm going to stay. I'm definitely going to be here for a good while, but. We'll see what happens. You know, I, I like to move though. I like to. Uh, you're like, a wee bit I, of a nomad. You yeah, and like, like, like pep, you get bored after three years. Yeah, and you like, move do you know on. what? I'd love to live in Amsterdam for a year. Oh, you wouldn't like. No, not when for enough. Women would not be aware of though, of like all the Aberdeen Angus steakhouses and getting back at two o'clock in the afternoon. Like, yeah, but I would live in the suburbs. I yeah. I'm sick of it. I'm, I, I'm, like, I'm done with city centres. Like eight canals out. I've done my city centres, man. I've done my city centres. City centre life. I, I'm the, I, I live in Baltimore, as you know, like, and I wouldn't. 
people say to me all the time, well, do you not love to live in Belfast because you work there and like, you know, city life, you can take it or leave it. Oh, you know I, mean? I, I like love, going into it and coming out of it. Ballymena is the perfect location for me. So privy, uh, completely opposite to what some committee to the circuit will say, but it's the perfect place for me because I am half away, half an hour away from Belfast and I'm half an hour, hour away from the North Coast. There you go. And the North Coast so is beautiful, isn't if it? If me and the wife want to go up for a meal in the North Coast, we can decide to do that and we're halfway. If we want to go to Belfast, we can do that as well. And if you want so to go to Donegal, which is Port Rush for Catholics, it's a great spot. Absolutely. We have to just drive through Bandit Country yeah. to get there and we're grand. Because cool. that's the thing, the back roads, that's the fucking... The infrastructure here is what holds Well, if there was a United Ireland, Gary, we all know to be better saying, fucking more, Wes, mate. Absolutely. <laughs> fucking here. I'm for that here. Gary, thanks so much for coming. I've, I, do you know what? I've really over? enjoyed. Is that us? Yeah, we're it's done. Not me, my goodness. I've, I've really enjoyed Time talking flies. to you, and I've learned quite a bit. And it's also good to hear, you know, your opinions and your views in it. And it's nice that when you go to the south, you feel welcome and stuff. And listen, totally. Well, sorry, was, I'm not as big a prod as you thought. No, like, I totally <laughs> no. But like this, this is the thing. Like I, I, like I, I could two shits. Yeah. But like for me, it's a bit like it's but just I, so good that like, you know, people from especially a southerner talking to yeah. you know a British person. To me, it's just it's just like chatting to anybody in Dublin or Cork or London or Spain. It's just we're normal, all, isn't it? We're all one. Exactly. Gary, yeah. what's the comedy club again? Give it a plug. Uh, Kiwis Comedy Club. Um, next one is on the 23rd of September, which is my birthday as well. Brilliant. I so, did the club a couple of weeks yeah. ago. Brilliant. And yeah. you get pizza and chips up there as well. Pizza and chips. We do clasp wings, everything. And uh, yeah, th- it's an amazing night. It's a great so gig. It's a very good gig. It's at Kiwis Comedy Club. And uh, yeah, I host it and book it and stuff like that. So you can follow me on Instagram too if you want. Um, so yeah thanks Gary thanks much. so much for coming man good man listen thank you. good to see you and we're yes. definitely going to get you back on 100% appreciate thank you, it Andrew. thank you thank you see you guys cheers bye